Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I want to show you a super cool puzzle. So take a second and look at this position. It is white to move. The white king is currently cornered on A1. And your job is to see if you can win or draw this with the white pieces. So take a second, see if you can figure out the solution here. You might see the first couple of moves, but I think that as the puzzle goes on, you'll realize just how cool this one is. While you're thinking about that, let me quickly encourage you to subscribe if you have not yet already. Half of the income that I earn this channel goes directly to charity, so every like, every subscriber helps us out so much. Okay, let's get started here. So clearly the threat is this diagonal. So let's just talk about an obvious bad move. Maybe you queen, well, you're going to get mated. Sorry, that hurts because of these killer bishops, really just this one bishop and the king. Okay. Let's get past the easy stuff. Let's get into the beauty of the puzzle. So immediately you might think, well, the only way to hold on to this knight is the first move you have to promote to a knight. And that is, that's correct. That's true. Nice work. Now, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. If they take this, is this good or bad for them? This is actually bad for them because they would take, you would take their uh, bishop and you're about to promote. And they can't mate you with just this, not enough, right? They have nothing to check you. They need dark squares. So you'd win this, actually, as white. Okay, well, maybe the other way around works. Maybe you take this one first. Well, this is where the puzzle kind of begins. You take this on uh, e8 with the bishop, and now you promote to another knight. Crazy already, right? 200 promotions, and it's two moves in. Now, I want to quickly just suggest the fact that you might want to look into other lines. If you're black, maybe you want to, like, drop back or push the pawn. No, you don't want to do that, right? I want to suggest that if you look into that, you'll find it's not fruitful because this pawn is threatening to promote. So you kind of have to give up your bishop right now because if you push this, I get a queen, and there's going to be some big trouble because this looks menacing if you take here, but I don't take there. Instead, I play something like queen c8 or queen c7, check you, get you off of this diagonal because this is the threat. And once you move away, then I have some, some clarity to work with. Maybe I can play queen d6 check. Maybe I can kind of move my king. I don't know. There are lots of ways to play the game. But the point is, it's winning for white. Okay. So they take. Let me go back. They take. You underpromote again to a knight. You're guarding your own knight. Now, they want you to run out of moves. That's what they want, right? Black wants you to be exhausted when it comes to tempi, so you have to move a knight, so you have to give up the tempo, and you have to lose. So let me give you an example of that. So let's say they play king c2. Now, you can't move this knight. Legally, you can't move it. And if you move this knight anywhere, any of these squares... It seems like pretty silly, right? They just take, and now you're pinned. So what do you do? Well, nothing. You lose. This is, this is how you lose. So you have to be careful with the tempo, or in this case, the tempi, multiple of tempo. So they make a move like king c2. Now here is the key question for you, and this is one that I really want to interact with the community about because it's so cool. You have pretty much two moves. You have e3 or e4. Which of these two moves do you think is the right move? So let me tell you right off the bat, I thought e4 because why not? I'm running the pawn up the board. What's wrong with this? Let me just take you down a road for a moment. If e4 is played, black continues to wait with the king. And what do you do? Well, you pretty much have to push this pawn. Right? Anything else doesn't work. Like I was showing, if you do this, they just take. And then... You, don't, you can't move that, so you can support it, but then they just make waiting moves, and there's not much you can do. So just for example, this bishop takes. I'm going to push the pawn. That's fine. They have this move. They have bishop f8. They can come around. There are a lot of ways to do it, and all of them result in a win for black. So you have to push. Okay, the king keeps making waiting moves. You keep pushing. The king keeps waiting. You keep pushing. The king keeps waiting. But here's the problem. You can't wait anymore with this pawn. 
So if you play something like knight f6 to avoid this, they take you and you might think you're being super clever because you can play under promote to a knight. They just play bishop f8 and you're still going to lose because you have all of these dark square vulnerabilities. So maybe you're thinking you can defend this. I'm not so sure how. Maybe knight d5 trying to defend this square. Well, bishop c5. How are you defending this square? You're not. This one can't defend this one, and neither can this. So it doesn't work. You're going to lose. You play knight c3, they play bishop d4, you're too slow, you lose the game, right? Just as an example. So here's what's crazy. This whole process I just showed is completely dependent on e3 versus e4. If you play e3 in this position, not this position, in this position, it leads to a win, sorry, a draw for white. So you might think, what is the difference? If they keep going back and forth and we have this exact same interaction, what's the difference? Well, now I play knight f6, they take, and again, I under promote to another knight. And just like before, they play here with the threats of coming in here, coming in here. What's the difference? Now, for some reason that I feel like I hardly even understand, knight e4 is the, win the winning move, sorry, the drawing move, because now if the bishop were to come in, first of all, look at where the bishop can even go. Can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. It can go here, and it can go here, and it can go there. So three moves are in, three moves are out, and if it makes a move like this, it can't go here next because this whole diagonal is pretty much covered up look at this these diagonal squares are covered up so you have to access one of these squares but to access one of these you need to reach one of these but you can't get to these because the knights are hanging out so it's kind of incredible so you might think play b4 well look at this knight g5 this is a draw can you believe that like i think it's crazy this is a draw because if i would play on I'd play this move, try to mate you. Doesn't quite work. Again, doesn't quite work. Knight f3. I'm defending this. Maybe you want to, I don't know, go back. Where do you go? Because everything on this diagonal currently is covered, except for this square. Maybe you want to get to c3. How are you going to do that? You need to get somewhere like e3 and then pivot. Well, you can't pivot, right? Because my knight's right here. Do you see the, the, the cool detail here in this puzzle? So really, what's nuts about this puzzle is it all hinges on that first move out of the gate. So I want to show you how the composer made it, and I just want to make sure I cover the line. You take a promote to a knight again. Now, in the puzzle, it's king c2, e3. Let me just go. I'll kind of go through the moves kind of fast since I've already shown them a couple of times. Okay. King moves, pawn moves, and now you might wonder, what if the pawn moves to b4? Does that make any difference? Not really, because now you can still play pawn e7, and then the king moves, and you have this super resourceful move, knight f6, blocking up this diagonal just so that they can take and you can re-promote. And if you might, you might think if they go back, what do you do? Well, you just do this. Look at that, and if they take that, that is stalemate. How cool is that? So I hope you're kind of seeing all the elements of this puzzle because it's nuts. But yeah, so pretty much the way that this puzzle ends is you play knight g7, they don't take you, instead they try to kind of make one last effort with b3. You just take it, and then the bishop takes you, and keep your king very safe, play king a2, and this is a draw. So that's the puzzle. I really think it's cool. It's really challenging. And again, this is a draw, right? The bishop just gives itself up for the pawn. There's no, no chance here. So it's really cool. It's really challenging. But I hope you're able to appreciate it because I know I did. I feel like I still don't really understand the difference between a3 and a, sorry, e3 and e4. But it's just a game of tempo. So maybe that's how simple it is in my head. Perhaps I am underestimating it. But yeah, let me know what you think, and if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. 
But that is it for now. Thank you so much. Bye.